check this out. We're going hot. We've taken the time to give the car a well needed bath and took time to grind down any weld splatter or any imperfections that we found along the way as well as we paid special attention to areas where we did do welding uh, where the powder coat was overheated we made sure to grind that area back to the powder coat that's actually stuck to the metal that's going to be very important as we move into our other episodes where we're going to begin to paint this unit but before we do that, we wanted to share our excitement with you guys <laughs> because we are so excited that we've actually got all of this done in time for Christmas. And we wanted to make this episode kind of special and we wanted to give some time to a lot for some before and after. So we're going to clip in some shots from our previous videos. Except for what are you doing in there? I said I was a flapper damn man. I saw it fly something up. Take two, take three, something. Oh! Ow! Okay, so after arguing with Sam. We had to cut the frame back substantially. It's still <laughs> hot. Still hot. Ow! <laughs> what the car looked like before as well as I'm, we're going to go through each item that we did and show you kind of the old parts that we had and a little brief explanation about the experience with that particular upgrade so without further ado follow along with me and we're going to begin checking out what we did up here on the front end all right what's this last little bit you're doing here well we had two extra pieces in our kit from master's build we didn't exactly know where they went so uh, had to call down there and ask them where these two last little bits and pieces went and found out that they actually go up here to the front cross member. Hey, what you doing? I'm trying to set this thing up so that way it'll mock up better in the car. Got to get the angle on the dangle, huh? Apparently. We'll look and see what this looks like here. Oops. See how it fits under there? That's what I thought. You can tug it right. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> tug it right there. Let's do it. Let's just shoot it just like that. Look at that, right in the thing. Just hold your hand right there. Yeah, buddy. Watch your eyes. We're going to take this time to show you guys what the front end looked like before we get started and we're going to clip that footage in now. So this is the old cross member that we cut out. I'm going to lay it down in here over top of our new piece just to kind of give you an idea of what this looked like beforehand. And I'm going to line the holes up here because the old cross member was in front of the uh, the new cross member. So the control arm will mount on, we used to mount on the back side of this cross member. It will now mount on the front side of the brand new cross member. And the overall goal of this is to help keep this unit from digging in the mud. And we've had a hard time and masters builds in general have a hard time about being in the mud on the track. And again, it's okay to skim across the top of the track but you most certainly should not be digging into the track. We did have to replace the passenger side engine mount, uh, as well as this back stabilizer bar that goes back to the two inch square frame rail tubing. The right front frame rail, it was necessary to cut out the entire unit and install a new piece of two inch square tubing. Two reasons, one, to give us additional clearance from the track and two, so that way we could install without having to make any modifications our brand new engine mount that we purchased from Masters Build. We want to take one more chance to show you the additional clearance that this particular modification is giving us here. Uh, so we have a substantial amount 
of additional clearance from the track that we won't have to worry about this part rubbing in the mud. It's actually sitting like on top of the frame there where it would have been. Yeah. You can see here that not only were we in the mud, but we were constantly in the mud. Look how shiny and polished off this is. This is not just skimming over the track. This is burying this corner of the frame into the mud. And every time the frame makes contact with the track, then it reduces the amount of downward spring pressure you have on your right front tire. As soon as it lifts enough of that downward spring pressure off of that tire, you'll begin to push straight up into the wall. We also added an additional bar here for extra support. There's another dime in there. And then we sleeve this bar to make it connect back to the new frame rail. The old four bar brackets were very limited in their adjustability with only three holes on the bottom and four holes on the top. We removed this unit and installed this new replaceable four bar bracket from Masters Built. It's going to allow us to move our rods both backward and forward, as well as a lower degree of change as we move our bars up and down on the bracket. I have to sneeze. <laughs> I feel it coming on. Banana, 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 uh, banana, banana, right. banana, 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 banana. Okay. We can clip that part out. Give you guys a. Hopefully, this looks a little bit better than some of the older footage that we had. Yeah, we're going to replace these four bar brackets. We got some pretty neat looking ones. Check that out. Look at all the extra holes. Very exciting. I'm super pumped about it. There's a reason we were all smiles when we were finished with this project. That is for sure. Other additional things on top of adding the brackets themselves was the uh, channel gusset, the additional uh, one inch bar gusset, as well as modifying and moving this bar here. Pretty cool on that side and we'll rinse lather repeat for the other side here. We've now moved over to the right side where you guys can see we added the same style of bracket but a little bit different mounting setup where this bracket mounts directly, the tabs mount directly to the frame rail and then we had to add the additional stub out here at the bottom but it's still the same amount of adjustability from top to bottom and we're pretty excited that we're going to be able to change our lower and upper left rear bars. Those are some of our number one bars that we change if we need to when we're moving from track to track or from condition to condition. So we're very excited about having a little additional um, choices when it goes to making those changes while we're at the track. Here's the second phase of the B phase, whatever Sam wants to call it. We did this additional shock mount modification. Our old shock mount was damaged in an accident. So we purchased this new shock mount from Masters Built. The purpose of this thing not only is to make it replaceable, but also brought our shock position up a half an inch and back a half an inch, which uh, should give us some additional travel to help us with our, uh, our spring rate numbers. That spring rate number isn't right. That's not, I should have said that. What, what, it's our smash numbers. Smash numbers. Uh, <laughs> we, moved this, a... we moved this bracket up a half an inch and in a half an inch to give us some more shock travel. That's going to help our smash numbers out substantially once we get this car back together and we're ready to start trying to put it on the track. All right, you want to do a uh, like a selfie outro? Yeah, you're going to do all the talking to you right here. <laughs> all right, thanks for hanging out with us in the garage tonight. We've had a busy, busy week, and uh, we're so excited to show you guys all of our cool upgrades. We want to make sure we take time to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. 
and keep hanging out with us if you like our videos. Drew, what do they need to do if they like our videos? Uh, like and subscribe and hit the bell. And hit the bell. All right. Another night in the garage. Stick around right. with us for next time as we begin to paint this body up and get ready to start breaking sheet metal. Thank you.